Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.5 sexual hormones in humans. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 16.5 you need to describe the roles of testosterone and estrogen during puberty, describe the menstrual cycle in terms of changes in the ovaries and in the lining of the uterus and for extended explain the role of hormones in controlling the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. Puberty is the period of time during which boys and girls reach sexual maturity and become capable of reproduction. During this period, which typically occurs between the ages of 10 and 14, a young girl's ovaries, which already contain all the ova she will ever produce, begin to release eggs. At around the same time, the ovaries also release a group of female sex hormones called estrogens into the bloodstream. These hormones induce the the development of secondary sexual characteristics, which are physical features associated with puberty that are not directly related to reproduction. In girls, these characteristics include the growth of breasts, widening of the hips, and the growth of pubic and underarm hair. Additionally, the uterus and vagina increase in size, preparing the girl for potential pregnancy. Boys experience puberty around the same age as girls. During this time, the testes release a hormone called testosterone into the bloodstream. Testosterone induces the development of male secondary sexual characteristics, which include enlargement of the testes and penis, deepening of the voice, and the growth of pubic, underarm, chest, and facial hair. In addition, both boys and girls experience a significant growth spurt during puberty. Next, you need to know about the menstrual cycle. In sexually mature females, the ovaries release an ovum around once every 28 days. In preparation for the possibility that the ovum is fertilized, the lining of the uterus thickens. This ensures that if fertilization does occur, the embryo that develops can successfully implant or embed itself into the uterine wall. If no sperm cells reach the egg and fertilization does not occur, the lining of the uterus breaks down and the cells along with blood are expelled through the vagina. This is known as menstruation or a menstrual period. Following menstruation, the uterine lining begins to regenerate and another ovum starts to mature. Okay, so that's everything for core, but for extended, you also need to know about the hormones that control the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. The menstrual cycle begins with menstruation, that is, the expulsion of cells and blood from the broken down lining of the uterus. The pituitary gland at the base of the brain then releases follow stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH stimulates the development of follicles and the eggs contained within them in preparation for ovulation. As the follicles develop, the ovaries secrete more estrogen, which thickens the lining of the uterus and increases blood vessel formation. These changes allow the embryo to implant if the ovum is fertilized. The rise in estrogen levels stimulates the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone or LH. LH causes ovulation or the release of an ovum from an ovary. Once the ovum has been released, which usually takes place on around day 14 of the cycle, the empty follicle transforms into a corpus luteum, which begins to secrete another hormone called progesterone. Like estrogen, progesterone thickens the uterine lining and promotes the growth of blood vessels. If fertilization occurs, the corpus luteum continues to secrete progesterone and the receptive uterine lining is maintained. If, however, fertilization does not take place, the corpus luteum stops producing progesterone, resulting in the breakdown and shedding of the thickened lining. During pregnancy, the placenta takes over the role of producing progesterone from the corpus luteum, while the ovaries continue to secrete estrogen throughout. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.5, sexual reproduction in humans. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 16.6, sexually transmitted in infections.